Hi, I'm the PC Expert Amateur, and we're going to take a look at the other Silverstone fan that I did get from them that they donated to me. The one that I just reviewed, the Silverstone AP-182, was something that I personally bought. <clears throat> this one, however, is an even newer air penetrator that Tony from the marketing team sent over to me after... He had offered me fans, and I told him, well, I was planning on doing my big fans next instead of going through all the rest of my 120s. And he was like, okay, well, I'm going to send you this, this, and this. You've already seen, uh, well, you've seen this one, and you're going to see a 160, and you're going to see a 140. I'm glad I have a 160 from them because uh, I only have one other 160, and it is for a specific case. So you'd have to modify it to be able to use it on other cases that are different. So this is the Air Penetrator 184i Pro, right? And <clears throat> just like the one I just reviewed, the 182, this one comes with a grill that actually serves to channel the uh, wind so that it goes straight out and goes for a further distance, um, which unfortunately there is one downside to the, that that I am aware of and that this much of a barrier in the way is decreasing the um, airflow and static pressure. But we don't need to worry about that. Now, one of the things I think is very interesting about this fan is um, and I don't know who came up with the idea first. I mean, I know they, they've got their uh, designs on both sides of their fan blades, and they call it uh, kind of a, a shark scale design. And then Geometric Future has their geometric design on their fans. And I'm aware, you know, that there probably are other companies that have produced uh, fans along this line. And I'm, I kind of wonder if Silverstone or uh, Geometric Future or anybody else has looked into the research done by Dr. Fish regarding protuberances on whales and how that impacts um, their ability to move through the water. But um, this is not exactly the same thing as the protuberances you see on the, the, the lips of the whales and their, and their uh, fins. So take a look at this. Yeah, try to get it so that you can there we go. Isn't that interesting? I think it's you know it's kind of nice looking, but will it show up when this fan is spinning? It also has two different mounting hole positions to make it more to make it compatible with more uh, cases. And this is the channel uh, the air channeling grill. That also guards your fingers because it's a powerful fan and you don't want to lose any body parts. It's not as powerful as the 182, but it's powerful. So, I, you know, I, I just kind of enjoy looking at the pattern on there. I just... I don't know if I enjoy it as much as the Geometric Future or uh, the same. I, I can't really say, but, you know, I'm not going to sit around staring at it for hours. I'm not on drugs or anything like that well except for the ones my doctor has prescribed which I have decreased I used to be on oh about a dozen and now I'm down to uh, about eight so I'm making progress health wise some things I can't get rid of because they're genetic and it's really hard to deal with them some things I can Oh man, it's on. And, and in case I didn't say it, this pattern on the concave side is sticking out, and on the convex side, or sorry, <laughs> I'm getting them backwards. It took me a long time to learn the difference between concave and convex. But the point is, is that if it says concave, that means it's like this, and if it's convex. Um, you know, it's talking about the inner surface of this kind of a shape. And if it's convex, it's talking about the outer surface of this kind of shape. So the convex side um, has these this design that sticks outward. And on the concave side, it 
unless I'm sorely mistaken, and I, it's kind of hard to to say with absolute certainty, but it certainly looks like this was pressed in on what, on the concave side. <clears throat> I think that's very interesting. Let's go ahead and check it out now. So I don't know. You tell me. Can you see any kind of indication of the pattern? I believe I see something. Just like if I had the Be Quiet with their ripple blades, I feel like I can see these kind of rings... I don't know, can you guys see it? But it's not very pronounced. It's pretty mild, but I, I believe I see rings. It kind of reminds me of back in the days when I was a young man, uh, about a million years ago, the uh, LPs or the black plastic or vinyl discs that we used to use that had music recorded on them, and it just kind of reminds me of the tracks on that uh, a, a bit. So that's kind of kind of nostalgic in a weird kind of way since it's a fan. But let's go ahead and, and check out the uh, noise. I'm going to try to get it down to the lowest uh, speed I can without it stopping. Not exactly quiet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's about as slow as I can go. It's a little bit noisy already. I'm not really sure, but I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's the bearings. a fairly low pitch and once it gets up this high th that noise uh, this noise is drowning out the sound from what again I think is the bearings but it's not a quiet fan now if we take this fan and I hold it over here let's see how far I can feel it on my hand Hmm. I, I seem to not be aiming it very well. Interesting. Um, I would say it's actually going about as far as it did with the um, the 182. I can kind of feel it over here, which is about, again, about three feet. <clears throat> and the point at which it gets uh, strong is about here. About here, I'd say, somewhere in this area here. So that's about a foot away. So that's really good pressure. It's uh, not as good as the 182, but it's still very, very good. And um, But, you know, uh, it doesn't have the speed dial like the 182 does. Uh, and it does have the benefit of two different mounting hole si uh, positions. Um and it has the shark force texturing. I'm not really sure what the po uh, point is of the shark force texturing. I'm, you know, I, I looked at it earlier, but I, I, it's, I'm blanking on it right this minute. I'm so sorry. You can look it up on their website if you really want to know. Okay, so it's supposed to decrease noise and increase performance. Um, I feel like it's actually, in some ways, in certain uh, parts of the sound range, it's a little bit noisier than the 182, but I'd have to do a side to side, which I will do after this video of the four fans. <clears throat> um, 
Uh, but I do believe that the um, the pattern does help uh, uh, give the fan the ability to push the air farther because you know it's it's kind of capturing the air and then throwing it in a different way than a, a smooth blade would do or even a mildly textured blade would do. But yeah, so it's 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 pretty good. It's definitely not as strong. Um, I wouldn't put this beside my bed to help keep me cool in the depths of summer when it was 90 something degrees Fahrenheit that is <laughs> if it was Celsius I would be in big trouble um, but yeah it, it is a good fan and unlike the 182 it doesn't draw 1.3 amps making it easier to find a header to plug it into. In fact, the rated current is only 0.31. So that's, you know, that's a big plus. But, you know, let's take a look at those specs. Okay, so thanks to uh, Tony at Silverstone for sending this and the other two fans to me. I appreciate it. It's the Air Penetrator 184i Pro, which uh, is also referred to, I believe, as the SST 184i Pro. So, it is um, going to cost you about $50 at best, uh, which I think I saw on eBay. And then I saw other places where it was over $70. So, this is by no means an inexpensive fan. However, it does perform pretty well and it doesn't actually use a huge amount of of <coughs> electricity. Now it's cer got certifications from CE, ROHS, and UKCA. Made in China, 180 by 32 centimeter. Uh, sorry, millimeters. <laughs> I don't know what the lifespan is because it's not on the box. And uh, I did ask uh, Tony if he could let me know about the um, lifespan and warranty of of the Silverstones that I've got. And it has a one-year warranty in the U.S. and Australia for a fan that costs, uh, if you're lucky, $50. That seems like an awfully truncated warranty period. Okay, so the, um, the weight is 430 grams, making this one of the heaviest fans on my list. And on the box, it says 410 grams, but my scale says 430. So I find that a lot of times when I, I weigh scale, um, stuff, uh, what the manufacturer of the fan said is not what I discover it to be. Um, not Silverstone specifically. I'm talking about in general. A lot of companies, if they give a weight at all, is often different. And there are a number of possible reasons for that. It could be that at the time that the marketing material was put together, the fan had a different weight, and then it was modified, and they didn't update the information. Okay, so nine blades. The um, mounting hole distances are 153 and 165 millimeters. Uh, it has a speed range of 0 to 1,200 RPMs. So, yes, it can do 0 RPM protection and it has an airflow range of 0 to 143.21 airflow which makes it pretty darn strong but again not as strong as the 182 and a range for static pressure of 0 to 2.22 millimeters of water which is substantially weaker than the 182. And the minimum noise, obviously, zero, maximum 34.5 decibels. The, bla the uh, cable, that is, is 51.5 centimeters long. Uh, no daisy chaining or sleeve. And it's got a uh, PWM connector. It's got a double or, uh, ball bearing or dual ball bearing, whichever way you want to say it, doesn't really matter means the same thing. 12 volts uh, from 5 to 12 volts, 3.7 watts, 0.31 amps. It does have indicators for flow and rotation, turns in a clockwise direction. It ha comes only with uh, four 
screws, and of course the corner cushions. There's nothing else. So, you know, I, I guess um, you are probably thinking, well, why is it so darn expensive? It's got a one-year warranty and it doesn't come with squat? Well, keep in mind that because it's large and a lot of cases are not designed for 180s, there aren't many people buying it. So, you know, it's, a, it's all about the supply and demand thing. So if they can't sell very many, they have to have a higher price. If a lot of people want to buy it, then they can sell it for a lower price. That's how it works. I'd like to thank Grindler at Bleeping Computer for allowing me to share my videos and posts on his website. Bleeping Computer has a lot of resources including vetted programs, malware removal instructions, uh, malware removal volunteers, uh, other kinds of volunteers for IT, cybersecurity information, and more. It's a great place to go. Give it a try. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.